So, um, especially being in Jamaica and Ghana, you was able to soak up those cultures. And um, just on how reggae music influenced your poetry. Yeah, you know, I moved to Jamaica in 1971. Now, you, if you know anything about Jamaica's history, um, again, another people tell time, I was just born at the right time and sort of moved around at the right time. So I, I moved to Jamaica during the the naissance, the sort of explosion of reggae music and roots music. So 71 to 80, that was that was like the sweet spot with people like Burning Spear, Bonnie Wheeler, uh, Gregory Isaacs, you know, you Roy, uh, Bob Marley, all of them were blowing up at that time. And so I went to school in Jamaica, those were my teen years. I went to high school in Jamaica, elementary school and high school in Jamaica. And um, so while I'm studying, uh, West Indian history, history about slavery and that kind of thing at a time when that was new and developing in the education system in Jamaica, a kind of revolutionary period of looking at the black history of Jamaicans. While I'm doing that in school, I'm on the bus going to school and uh, hearing it on the radio is Bob Marley singing. Every time I hear the crack of a whip, my blood runs cold. I remember on the slave ship, how they brutalized my very soul. This is, I'm, I'm being trained in, in school and yet being trained by the music, burning spear singing, do you remember the days of slavery? Do you remember the days of slavery? So that, that, that wonderful, uh, wonderful cauldron of, of thought and complication. And yet I was an African in Jamaica. So that, that was a, a, a culture shock for many Jamaicans to actually see a, a living African. I mean, it, it's like light years away from today and in terms of um, the relationship between Jamaica and Africa, but the people who were pioneering that connection of, of you know, of, for, for a country that was 90% of African descent, but the people who were pioneering that connection as a part of a valued part of their lives were, were the working class people, the Rastafarians. And, um, and for me, that was a great connection and, and their welcoming me as a young African kid uh, was, was, was important to me. So, so, you know, you asked the question about the influence of reggae on my poetry. Well, I would say, I, I'd say it's, it's, you know, poetry is a funny thing. Poetry reflects the self, right? And um, I can't, and therefore, I was, I've been shaped by reggae. I've been, my sense of consciousness was shaped by reggae music. It was shaped by high life music. It's shaped by art, by, by uh, faith and so on. And that's all going to be reflected in my poetry. Um, and, and reggae gives me a, a, a powerful framework for, for Pan-African ideas, the connection between Africa and the Caribbean from Africa to the United States, you know, moving to South Carolina, which is, probably the most African of states in this country. Um, so that whole thing is all part of my makeup. I'm a Pan-Africanist. I'm a person from, I, I live, my living body is, 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 a, is a diasporic body. So, and it's cool. <laughs>